morning, everyone. Let me just turn off the sound. I have been running around like an official chicken with the uh, head cut off thing. I would like to say, before I begin, I of course want to say good morning to everyone. We are live, turtleislandnews.info, Wolf Spirit Radio. Um, not on awake radio today just because they've been having some problems with um, their connection but we'll have that sorted out and of course Revolution Radio Studio A we're all listener supported and um, we've heard in the last couple days that um, we've been falling behind so if you can help us out we always appreciate it you guys are, are awesome to me in general so I want to say thank you anyway for all that you do. And looking at the news, these freaking terrifying global events, right? <laughs> oh my god. You look around and think, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to bed. I'm going to take myself and a great big bottle of wine and go to bed. I'm not saying there hasn't been days that I've done exactly what I just said, but let's not do this today, what do you think? Because I could spend the entire show just saying, well, oh my God, the end is near. More and more people are predicting major earthquakes events in the West the west coast of Turtle Island, Canada, United States, Mexico. We have had some horrific events. This fire that's going on in the Okanagan, well, the west coast, especially north central Washington, is now the largest the state has ever seen. The fires going on there, unprecedented. They're using words like cataclysm, emergency, states of emergency. Which is why I mentioned the state of intoxication that we could go to. <laughs> the words they're using for these things. You know, we look up in the sky and I realize we can't see it. But there are 14,000 satellites orbiting the Earth. 80% of those are called zombies because they don't work, so they're up there crashing and banging into themselves. If that's not enough, the Nexon pipeline spill, details that are not being shared, has pretty much ended Alberta, as we know. Horrific. They're saying worse than the province, but this is the worst in Canada. And they're lying, of course. I have a friend who just, well, just did a, a West Coast tour. So from Winnipeg all the way to the West Coast. So it's, it's a lot of miles. He is a very um, intuitive person. So I asked him how he felt what he felt from the animals and the plants as he was leaving, as he was crossing these areas. How do they feel about what's going on? Because I actually ask these questions. What the plants are feeling. What the trees are feeling. What the mountains are feeling. See, the majority of people have forgotten that these are living beings. We, of course, are part of the biome. We absolutely are part of part of this biome, just one part. We are not the big deal. I know we would like to think we are the big deal, <laughs> but we really aren't. We really, really aren't. And I think if um, the world had its say, which it's really having right now, we would certainly not be the favorites. The earthquakes, Los Angeles, Japan. These events that 
are going on. Not unprecedented, of course. Absolutely what we're saying, what we've been saying. And we are coming to the times that we have heard predicted over and over again where the earth shakes roughly every 26,000 years volcanoes are waking up it's time that we are more attentive of these events if you want to head east yes if you don't that's fine. Most of Texas is in trouble. This is why FEMA domes are being put up right now. I look them up. Check them out. It's also the reason why the Walmarts were closed. The Walmarts are providing a network to distribute supplies to people. But remember, what happened last time? A nation was dependent on an organization. United States does not have the best record for helping its own people. And we know what happened last time. Areas have been hit with Yellowstone volcanoes. We're also going through Jade Helm. But the events right now, the Samita, which is, this word comes from Samyaza. This is the age of light that the Pope has even talked about. I don't want to judge, of course. I think at this point we don't have to worry about war so much. We need to worry about our entire bloodline being wiped out to the earthquakes, rising water, tidal waters. This isn't a movie. And we aren't in Kansas anymore. This is real time in your life that you need to make a decision. You need to really be smarter than everybody else. Or die with them. If you choose to move away from Yellowstone, move away from the coastlines, move away from the Ring of Fire in the Pacific, it's up to you. It is. It's up to you. We have talked about many times, of course, what people don't understand about Japan. This accident situation, it's a leakage. One needs to understand the way the general public has been misinformed as we're being misinformed by all the disasters. And if you want a horror story, go to my page, TurtleIslandNews.info. Good morning, everybody. And read what's happening today, just today. We are being kept in the dark. The events that we told you about, Chief Charles Tudog and I told you about within days of this accident, It's affected the future of this entire world population. Everything. The present radiation, the radioactive material leakage from all the disasters that have been triggered by that one, Japan. You just see horrific patterns of sequences of events rocking the world's population. My estimate, and the estimate I get from people who actually understand these things, like nuclear physicists, are saying through this 
first trigger. In North America, over the next 25 years, around 10 million people will die. All across Turtle Island, the loss of agriculture, topsoil, will be so immense that some of these lands will be unsuitable for agriculture for at least several tens of years. If you don't believe it, just look at the present the present radiation cloud of cesium. The northwest of US and and western Canada. The deaths that are happening on the coast and our scientists are still sitting there and shaking our heads, learning from Chernobyl and what it taught us about nuclear reactors and their controllers, was that you do not put water on a runaway reactor. Clouds over this world now are plumes which were further created by using water from the air, allowing seawater to enter a damaged containment room. In these cases, the reactor effectively is so lost and lost cooling systems that it could not work, could not be stopped. looking at the way they're handling this situation alone. Just this one. And we're shocked about the deaths of 30 whales off Alaska. Could this be linked to a toxic bloom? Yes. And if you've been listening to me for a while, our mother reacts in certain ways to emergencies. Look at the toxic blooms, the red tides as her immune system. The toxic phytoplankton in the local marine environment that can paralyze as well as kill. Well, a federal investigation has been opened into the giant mammal's mysterious demise. A situation has been labeled an unusual mortality event. They have theories. Perhaps they should have called me. I have a freaking theory. Our mother reacts to certain traumas in certain ways. So do we. Look at what happens when you get a cut. How this bubbles over. How this works. What our bodies do to deal with that. It's not, um, it's not surprising. You know, in the rush to export coal all over the world has been an environmental and economic mistake. I posted some pictures of what's going on in um, Gladstone, Queensland today. the long-term damage. Now this planet will be fine. She always is. She has time. She has millions of years. Here in Canada, who used to be known as the good, <laughs> the good people of this continent, that's over, with our um, Prime Sinister Harper, who supported exploitation all over the world. Rape of Africa continuing, of course. And our policy, Canada's policy, can be summed up in a couple words. Do what is good for Canada-owned mining companies, which means British Petroleum. Yes, they own the mines on the ground and the water. Even with widespread criticism of 
operations, this has not stopped the support for the ravages that we are doing all over the world. Canadian mining companies bribing officials, evading taxes, dispossessing farmers, displacing entire communities, employing forced labor camps with children, devastating ecosystems, and spurring human rights violations all over the world. More important than specific instances of abuse, which I have detailed before, Canada and Africa has been 300 years of aid and exploitation because that's what our aid is. You know, I was grateful on the weekend because um, Patty Walking Turtle invited me on her show. We have a, a, a round table. A round table where we speak of the issues of the day. And of course things like Agenda 21, which we've spoken of, and things like that were brought up. Were brought up. But you can look online because there's so many things posted about this now. The prophecies of Columbus. Was he a prophet? No. Was he paid by Queen Isabella to rape this continent and continue the rape of the islands? No. He was not paid by the Queen. He was paid by the Vatican and by rich Jews who, yes, worked together. In his prophecies, he spoke specifically of us needing a one world ruler, a one world government, a Darth Vader. Okay, not so specifically Darth Vader, but an emperor. This is what he came here for. When he brought the slave ships, carrying first European people, and rats and diseases and filth. Europe had already been raped. Completely. People were starving. And as we've seen before, people that are starving will do anything to save their family. We have now an international emblem of human greed and insanity. And it's beyond my ability to find words to describe the pain and distress that I feel from the pictures of what's going on in this world. It breaks my heart. But I must look at it. For me, the newest pictures of starving bears in the Arctic is an emblem. It is a new flag for all life on this planet. All the birds, all the mammals, all the fish, all the invertebrates that are being destroyed by this parasitic change unleashed on this world in a mad suicidal quest for infinite growth. It is a picture that the likes of Stephen Harper and his cronies do not want you to see. For him, the destruction of, of the bears and all members of his species is perfectly acceptable price to pay to keep going a paradigm that is dead but doesn't seem to know it yet. Images do not evoke tears in me anymore. But I feel deep pain at the core of my being. As we are now learning to bear the unbearable.
and reflecting on our new habitat. On this anthropogenic change, near-term extinction, and I realize I have a habit of collecting news stories that tend to support what I have come to describe as the collapse of human and industrial societies. I realize this. And I've also been asked, why? Why do it? And doesn't it make me so depressed to be dwelling in so much negativity? And my answer has always been I couldn't live with myself if I didn't confront this head on. And I realize it's kind of a nonsensical statement, if there ever was one. I can't live with myself. I guess what's made it easier is to treat it all like a bit of martial arts, to accept the information and reflect it back out in a more concentrated form into the universe. You know, when I started my blog and talking online, it was about collecting stories about peak oil and collapsing economies and encouraging people to develop strategies for themselves their families, and first and foremost, their communities, to make them become more resilient, to transition to the post-carbon economy. But shortly after I started, the world economy was dragging itself along, still on the point of collapse. And things have become worse in ways I couldn't even imagine. And the stories have become shriller and more frequent, yelling out that this cannot continue, that something has to give. Well, all these good old processes have not gone away hard to escape the reality that we have now have a runway global destruction with numerous non-linear irreversible processes processes you know that word there's a whole bunch of crap going on simultaneously positive feedback loops that ensure in essence the hotter it gets the faster it gets it. Last couple weeks, since the onset of the northern summer, we have seen events whereby we seem to be watching the breakup of the Arctic ice in real time, daily, and a series of truly horrifying extreme weather events around our beautiful planet simultaneously. Now it seems to me that the narrative has to be changed from building sustainable communities to acknowledging that humanity is on a suicidal mission. And the greatest likelihood is that we, along with the rest of life, are heading for extinction. They're calling it near term. I guess that's softer. Would you like it softer? I woke up this morning after listening to Guy McPherson's interview with Doomsday Dinner for the second time with a strong need to make a tactical retreat to process myself or at least for myself what this means. And there are very various ways we can process these things. One, completely ignore reality. Take refuge in the lies, distractions of the mainstream corporate media, all owned by six guys, along with usual, well, usually comes an 
unconscious anger at having one's comfortable view of life challenged by the likes of you or I. Highly likely that these things get worse. And as they get worse, this anger will take on violent forms. These are the people that have become foot soldiers for fascism, who will inevitably blame the victims, will look for reasons for their predicament anywhere other than in the mirror. And I generally fear the strength and violence of this reaction. There are others who will take refuge in a more liberal view that also paints a largely false picture. Huge chasm here between the cloying rhetoric of Obama and the reality of his administration that stands out as well as the nonsense of the liberal media that takes the rhetoric for fact and ignores what I like to call reality. When it comes to what's going on climate-wise, the majority of those who recognize its reality will follow the official line, which paints a frightening but false picture of some sort of linear change. The oceans will rise, the world will get hotter, but not in our lifetime. Go have a beer. Another cookie. And I have become somewhat used to the distortions of media. It seems to be a complete taboo against dealing with any kind of reality. Other than a brief item here and there and things. Always in isolation from the global context and the reality of what we're seeing on the ground. And I have been, or at least should have been, more realistic in my expectations that the stark realities of rapid sea, ice melt, and methane release, along with all of the other feedback loops caused by these things, would be reflected somewhere in mainstream science. But it turns out, it has not. And there are so many paid informants now working with us on our allegedly free media sites, all of independence. But some people are getting really, really well paid, juicily well paid, shiny, bubbly well paid. And the actual observations of scientists who are actually working in the Arctic and the Antarctic has long overtaken the computer projections of this mainstream science. There's um, a David Westell Apollo Gaia program, UK in his excellent presentation on the Arctic, on the feedback mechanisms, makes it clear how wide the gulf between reality and the computer models are. I've always been aware of the inherent I want to find a nice way to put this conservativeness with that of scientists and their little tendency to become locked in their own specialities and thus avoid the big picture. But international bodies who should be involved with these subjects, you would think. Not only to all this, though, but also to considerable social and political pressures from member states who literally veto any conclusions they don't like. We are living in an age that we are just, I think, 
dawning on how bad it's gotten. Science by consensus. So why would an elite that is suppressing the realities of the economic breakdown and the peak oil and the resource depletion in general why would they be interested in having an informed public that is aware of the dangers? Why would they be interested in having people aware of the ecological collapse, the extinction of 200 species a day, the predicament of having 430 plus nuclear installations that are way past their use by date and subject at any time. Well, catastrophic meltdown. 430-ish right now. Is this the pleasure of extinction? In many ways, Essoy is pointing out how many times predictions of Armageddon have proven false. Discussing the important role, what should we call it this time? Fun fundamentalism. This is played worldwide, especially in the United States. However, without addressing sound scientific base behind any conclusions. There's a man called John Michael Greer. He wrote an article called The Pleasures of Extinction. He attacks people like Guy McPherson without naming him by name. He refers to a near term extinction as the latest apocalyptic fad. His word, fantasies of imminent human extinction are one comforting if futile response to this ugly predicament. If you want a justification for living as though there's no tomorrow, insisting that in fact there is no tomorrow is certainly one option. As if the conclusions of McPherson and many, many others was just one more apocalyptic cult instead of being based on sound science. So I did come across a single, well actually I did not come across one single scientific or factual argument in that article to counter Guy McPherson's article. And in subsequent ones, he talks about thermostatic mechanism, negative feedbacks, without, I suspect, understanding what any of that crap means. But if you can become um, a personality, our newfound cultish nature makes hearsay enough. Like when... 20 people read you the exact same article last week that was published in Natural News and had no facts whatsoever other than a couple words repeated over and over again I heard myself maybe 10 times but when we see these changes drastic as they are I guess we have to think there's nothing special about that and how the Arctic is melting. After all, the human species can withstand wide variations in temperatures, right? And I experience much greater variations in temperature when I step outside. And again, the answer, or the clear answer, came from Guy McPherson this recent article with the Doomstead Dinner. D 
the answer is not in the temperature per se, but in habitat. We are already seeing the loss of human habitat from processes like deforestation, desert, what is this even a word? Desertification, where things become desert, from eco ecological disaster, deep water horizon, catastrophe in the Gulf, Fukushima. We are seeing acidation of the world's oceans and increasingly dead zones, anoxic zones in the water, oxygen free zones in the water. It is our water and its processes that allow us to breathe in and out, which I'm relatively fond of. Increasing temperatures that we are already seeing. I know if you get one cold day you're losing your damn mind. See, it's not getting hotter. I'm from the north. We do not get 45 degree days in August until now. Future increases in concentrations of 400 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere actually much more, though thanks to the releases of methane from the permafrost and the methane caltrates from the Arctic and Antarctic mean that we will see huge temperature changes, a huge rage in changes. And already we are seeing that in recent climatic events such as the heat wave in Alaska and Siberia where temperatures went from freezing to 90 in a space of 50 hours. 90 Fahrenheit. What happens to humans and their habitat in these conditions, especially with the energy collapse, when we won't simply be able to turn the air conditioning on anymore? we will have to live with the new abnormal. Prolonged exposure to temperatures of more than 95 degrees Fahrenheit and we lose our ability to thermoregulate. In the words of Guy McPherson, in the short term we're dead. When the temperatures go from freezing to 100 in the space of two days how is our permaculture garden going to survive? At certain temperature, protein starts to denature. It breaks down. It is no longer viable. I would contend this means we lose our ability to feed ourselves quite quickly, let alone the ability to feed our seven billion brothers and sisters. No sane person would wish for the extinction of life on this planet. Still, let's make a big deal about it. But no intellectual argument is going to make this problem go away any more than collectively burying our heads in the sand or sucking our thumbs and rocking back and forth and singing la 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 la. <laughs> we need to accept the evidence. If you are going to argue, please do so on the basis of facts and evidence. Tell the climate scientists they are wrong. Tell the polar ice scientists that their measurements are wrong and the volume of the Arctic sea ice has not decreased by 80%. Please, please bring some evidence along with you as you refute these facts. Once we have accepted the evidence, we have to work out how we are going to respond. Another stage of the round. Maybe this is the five stages of grief. I heard there's five.
bit more. It's not just accepting the near-term extinction. This fluffy bunny word for oh my god. It's a probability, not a fact. Perhaps we need to learn to live with uncertainty. That for me, at least, is harder. Common argument against dealing with the facts is that people are incapable of doing so. So we should give them only give them such facts as they can deal with. Always re leave room for hope in the light workers in the Archangel Michael. Always hope. <laughs> to me, that roughly equates to lying to you and to the perennial objection that only possible reactions are to fall into the most abject depression, become a hedonist, party our way to oblivion. Given the way that most of us in the developed world would lead our lives, it is impossible to distinguish how living as a hedonist could be distinguished from the way we are already freaking living our lives. And regarding depression, does that have to be terminal? We can't move from anger to denial, to anger, to depression, to, to acceptance. What about looking at reality in the eyes without blinking? For me, it is the only way of living my life. Anyway, personal choice. And I realize every day, I, I wake up with at least two new gifts. My eyes opening. But if this is not crazy enough, and I want to give you something a little funny crazy. It's funny, crazy, weird, odd. Okay, 50 ships have just vanished. I mean it. They just, they've just disappeared. I don't know if disappeared is a nice way to say, okay, we sunk your 50 ships. Take that. North Korea submarines, 50 of them, have just gone bye-bye. That's 70% of the country's known fleet. Left their bases and disappeared from radar. A development that comes as two careers announced Monday that they plan to lift the semi-state of war. That's like, you know what, I'm a little bit pregnant. I'm sorry, you're either pregnant or you're not. So semi-state war. Semi-state. Is that not a conductive thing? Anyway, semi-state war prompted by a landmine explosion that injured two South Korean soldiers back on August the 4th. Now, a spokesman for South Korea's defense ministry reported that the North's mass submarine deployment is unprecedented and that the U.S. and Seoul have responded by increasing surveillance. The number is re nearly 10 times the normal level. So they take that situation seriously. South Korean news quoted military officials saying that the country mobilized all the surveillance resources to find the missing subs. No one knows whether the North will attack our warships commercial vessels, the South Korean official said. Now Seoul previously accused the North of torpedoing a South Korean warship back in 2010 in an attack that killed 46 people. Of course, 
Responsibility was completely denied. Nobody did it. The missile came from angels. I don't know. But anyway, it was reported on Monday that North Korea deployed 20 air cushion landing crafts near the Yellow Sea border with the South. The amphibious landing craft, which actually is relatively cool, poured reportedly left a North Korean naval base in North Korea. That was part as the agreement announced Monday afternoon after several days of marathon negotiation and said pissing match, testosterone flying all over the place. South Korea agreed to stop blasting propaganda from loudspeakers pointed at the militarized border with the North. They say they regretted the landmine blast earlier this month as well. We're very, very sorry. Further details of this talk are not disclosed. Also, the pissing match and testosterone fleeking is this reporter's opinion on probably what happened in that room with these fat little men. Now, part of the agreement announced on Monday afternoon, after several days of these negotiations, is they would start being nicer to each other. Actually, that looks like the translation. Now, this truce comes after the two Koreas exchanged live artillery fire last Thursday and Friday, which South Korea said the other guy started. <laughs> Seriously, South Korea said the North started it. It was the first time North Korea directly attacked South Korea since 2010 when they shelled the island of, I can't even pronounce it, but they killed four people with shells. South Korea hasn't, hadn't blared messages across the border in 11 years. It's an old tactic. The South has used on and off for decades, which mostly just really pisses off their northern, northern neighbors. His messages criticize Northern leader Kim Jong-un, the country's notoriously closed-off political system. The two countries have technically been at war since the 50s, with occasional skirmishes and pissing matches and breaking the sea, ceasefire every now and then. But the last time the two countries exchanged fire was last October, after North Korea fired on the South Korean balloons that were dropping propaganda materials over the border. So they've been kind of pissing at each other for a while. I don't know if it's time to send Den Dennis Rodman back. But when someone goes in there and takes out that fat panda boy, I think things will calm down. Those people will kiss the feet of their God King, but will rejoice when they are free. Take out the fat panda boy, and the world will give you food and employment. I'm sure these deals are being made right now. And of course, fat panda boy is <laughs> my opinion. Which, you know, could be say, said a little nicer, but I couldn't think of anything else that was more... Um, accurate. So we have Fat Panda Boy over there. We have now confirmation that Sandra Bland's death is being investigated as a murder, not a suicide. And pictures that I put up last week of that's not her are true. She is now being called a civil rights advocate <laughs> Not exactly true. Calling her a police accountability activist? Not exactly true. But according to a, test, a Texas district attorney, it's being treated as a murder. That's something, right? Something.
we are faced with a war. Two leaders. These have been the rulers of the planet for a very long time. Unsaid, of course. These are the angels. They are time and patience. You know, when I was a kid, my grandmother would get me to eat by saying, the more you stare at it, the more there is. <laughs> and I know this is not the time to finish your plate, but do you, do you know what I mean? <laughs> if you're like me, staring at a blank page conjures every kind of insecurity. <laughs> Let's take a little break, get up and stretch your legs. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy K. <laughs> Everybody, let me stop the music and we're back. Hello, Revolution Radio Studio 8. I'll be over in a minute. Say hi to y'all. Um, Turtle Island News.info, Wolf Spirit Radio. Again, we'll be back with um, Awake Radio as soon as they sort some stuff out. We haven't broken up or anything. <laughs> I do have to warn you, we may be getting random calls from my dad because he's got an iPhone now and he's been like, I think, pocket calling me, face calling me, dropping the phone calling me, <laughs> figuring out how to turn the thing on. Well, apparently it's quite the complicated maneuver. So here we are. Oh, and again, been asked to say, especially for Revolution Radio, we could use your help. Listener supported, funded, owned and operated by you. <laughs> Especially me. You definitely ran my ass. <laughs> you probably have said that nicer. I love it, of course. I would like some direction. Not specifically today, but in general, to tell, tell me what you would like me to talk about more. On the left hand side of my page, www.turtleislandnews.info, you will see a contact form. With that contact form, you can send me a message, tell me what you want. There's also a, a follow by email which um, I was asked to put up there. That's also on the left-hand side. And a subscribe to, which is on left-hand side. You can supply, sub, um, subscribe to posts or comments. And on the right-hand side, you come in. There's our tune-in player. There's our regular player. There's a lovely little chat room. And, um, of course, donate button. We love you just could always use some help. <laughs> so, terrifying global events. Well, China had the fourth set of chemical explosions. Right as the market slides into freefall, Dow Jones dropped 530 points. Friday, another 588 points Monday's close. These events are starting to produce huge headlines. Many different insiders have been forecasting. Intelligent galactic energy ultimately pushing us through this time. Because this socio-economic analysis of recent events is a gateway, and a gateway only, into a much grander cosmic drama that is playing out right now. All things are going on simultaneously, many different levels.
I know. Most people want to be manifesting miracles on this plane. And that if it wasn't for you, none of this would ever be possible. And I want you to know that right now is an incredible time. In all times are both things simultaneously. I need you to remember before I go on, if I go on with the news, that you are powerful and do and can create your own reality. You are the one who can change your reality at any given moment should you choose to do so. And I want you to understand that ingrain it into your psyche. Allow this knowing to penetrate your entire being. Reach all the way down to your subconscious. Align your thinking patterns. Having said this, I have some challenging messages. How do we even say it? Centrifugal force, the Earth's gravity pull, and the Earth's access through the wobble, polarities of the Sun's magnetic force, and the Earth's gravitational pull are lining into position right now. Within that pull and flip of polarities, brings transformation of my well mathematical ideas that are arising within the psyche of many people right now in order to reconstruct the understanding of workings of this universe and the very planet on which you live in this vehicle you are wearing we are wearing it we are it We are inside of this ship. This our ship, these human bodies. This new gravitational fault that you are experiencing is changing you rapidly now. You feel this. It is causing your vehicles, whatever you choose to vibrate in, to move to higher frequencies. This translates into a feeling of butterflies sometimes in your stomach. Heart palpitations that you think maybe you're smoking too much or you're drinking too much or you're running too fast. It's not. It's not that. A general feeling sometimes of floating. Just a few feet above the ground. A feeling of disconnection with your vehicles. Yes, and I mean your body and whatever you happen to be riding in right now. Your car, your bus, your plane, whatever. The identities that you hold dear to in your heart, the identities that you have acquired are falling away. They are peeling away. And you are having to look into that mirror that dark mirror and really see the true nature of your being. The same is happening with our beloved Earth. The planet that we reside is converting into something else. Changing, morphing, transgressing the frequencies, riding these things, taking a giant leap into a new time and space where she will continue to evolve. So these floating feelings of loss and disconnectedness 
and emptiness if you will admit it. It's natural. It is a natural phenomenon experienced by many of us on this planet right now. Indeed, it is so that you are losing your identity now. You're being forced to acknowledge that which you are. That which you truly are. And it may have come as a surprise. But understanding this new identity and the distortion of your familiar reality is causing massive upheavals to occur once again on our planet. Massive upheavals. For the inner and outer realities are clashing now, daily. Your inner reality is no longer associating with the outer illusionary world. You are breaking up with people, your best friends, maybe a lover, maybe yourself, maybe your boss. That which we have loved, if it is not really part of us, is falling away, cracking. Maybe it started with an itch. Maybe it started with the flaking of your skin. And know the physical things happening to you are just representative what's really happening to you what is also happening to our earth which is happening to our solar system which is happening to our galaxy on and on and on our planet her vibration is rising ascending if you will higher and higher her transformation is propelling the transformation of all the living beings on her we are only a part of her. And that is all. It's not all. But it is all. You want to see what's happening on the planet? Look at what's happening to you. What I'm trying to say is that this force within the earth, this centrifugal force within your own vehicle, your body, are right now at odds for many of you, many of us. There's a great balancing act required on your parts in order to stabilize these energies which are affecting you from within and without. It is of the most importance to find balance, to walk evenly within by releasing the programming of yesteryear, yesterday, yester minute. Acquire a new vibration, a new system. You must continue to thrive on this planet. You must. Many of you have come to this planet to anchor, to anchor the transformation to hold, to stay. Many of us have lost beloveds in the last year. 2015 is no over yet. Hold on to your butts. We're about to have a month of, I don't know, we may scream a little bit. This month is going to be tough. Now until September 21st. But wait till we get from September 21st to de December 21st. It, I don't want to say it's going to get worse, but it's going to get worse. <laughs> so you're going to find yourself busy. People are looking for massive awakening. There are massive changes. They are affecting us. Maybe some of you will be the ones that will guide lost souls, assist them in acquiring a new understanding, a new beloved adherence to a new reality on which we must live. Whether we stay or whether we go, 
there has to be changes made. I read some interesting articles this morning. I didn't sleep much last night. I've been waking up every two hours. It's important. The night work is becoming very, very important. I'm sure you're feeling that too. Wondering, do we stay or do we go? Are we going off world? You will not leave this earth unless you've changed. There is nothing out there that would allow us passage. There's nothing. We, it, it's fake. There's no way. Even in our upper atmosphere, which holds the human resonance, we'll get into that. There are beings. They are called sprites. They are called fairies now. These are the things that flash. One that I've told you about that's most likely the angel architect, but these things are alive. I realize that science today doesn't look at them as, as alive, but they're obviously alive. And they're not warring with each other. When is white, bright, a light? It causes lightning. During the storms, it travels up and travels down and causes our steady resonance. There's the red one. These are the jinn. Also the demons. They're the red ones. That's why we're afraid of the color red sometimes. We're told that way. It raises the frequency of this planet higher. It has signals from beyond the galaxy. It takes those signals, since it's our Earth. The white ones takes the signals from the sun and the other planets of our little solar system, sends that to your Earth. They're not fighting. They've never fought. They do a job. They always have. These things have been busy. So massive changes in your reality. It's why animals are so obviously getting smarter. smarter. Doing acts of empathy that are incredible. Also doing acts of violence that are horrific. Us too. We just don't see many of us getting smarter. Now. Stay alert to the rapid changes that you're feeling. I know you're feeling it. Stay grounded in your idea. Stay grounded in knowing that the truth is already in your heart. To lay out the way for those who are lost, return them home to their true selves. I ask you, just to stay stable. Hold these vibrations. You are capable of this. Might seem far out. Really strange. But I know you guys are used to it. I'm always a little strange, aren't I? <laughs> Crashing. Devastation. Horrific. Environmental catastrophes. We have a death rate for whales right now that is 1,500% higher. China's stock market lost 8.4% in an hour and a half. Same day. Well, Monday. We have smoky skies in Alberta and the devastation, of course already going on a burda. We have what looks like rod of God weapons being used all over the world. And this lunar tetrad pushing these events, stirring these events forward.
on um, when should I say it? Thursday. I'm going to talk about Trump. But ask opinions on him. Oh, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> but right now, we are in the age of sabotage. More and more sabotage. Pipelines that are bringing gas from Azerbaijan to Turkey have been taken out of commission for a second time in a month. An explosion believed to have been caused by sabotage. Halting the flow on the pipeline. That the Turkish em en Energy Ministry confirmed that the flow on the line, and I'm not even going to try to say it, it's a gas pipeline or the South Caucasus pipeline. It's been halted an explosion believed to be sabotage. This time they're saying Kurdish workers. Now, they have admitted responsibility for the previous attack um, earlier. I think it was the 4th of August. TV footage f um, shot in the Kars region in northeast Turkey at close to where the explosion occurred showed flames reaching hundreds of meters into the air, with the locals reporting that the explosion was heard miles away. Now an official from BP, BP Consortium, operating in Azerbaijan's gas field, which applies 6.6, .6, interesting number, billion, <laughs> interesting again, cubic meters a year of gas, confirmed that the flow was restarted on Sunday after being halted for three weeks due to the planned maintenance. Now, the flow was still ramping up, not close to normal levels when the explosion occurred. The repairs on the line expected to take several days. The area around the site of the explosion still sealed off by security forces now this sabotage second the pipeline in the last three weeks. Line was previously blown up on August the 3rd, an attack claimed by the PKK, interesting again, which also claimed responsibility for similar sabotage attacks in Iran, Turkey gas line, July 27th, Iraq, Turkey oil line, July uh, 28th. Now the P KK last month announced that it was ending a two-year ceasefire. This line will start it flowing, I think. Now this number I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. 2006 for sure, I think September 30th. Horrific explosion on this line. Also, I would like to make a formal request for the world to stop shaking. Well, it kind of did, really. Only three major earthquakes so far in August. But the weird thing is, they were all in the exact same place. And what happened to the major earthquakes this month? August could produce the lowest major earthquake count since March 2013, when only two were registered. It's holding, holding its energy. August registered so far three major quakes, all of them Solomon Islands. December 2013, January 2015 had low well, low four major quakes. August has six days left. Why is it quiet? No idea. Sunspot activity has been low. 
contributing factor. Often major quakes will occur in regions of tropical storms and hurricanes and typhoons, which we have in abundance. Puerto Rico is a place to be if you enjoy occasional earthquake. An alarming swarm of nearly 2,000 quakes have been registered this month, ranging from 2.5 to 5.7. But these aren't considered major. Experts have been warning governments in the area catastrophic tsunami event, which would make the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004 look like a walk in a park. Knowledge of earthquakes and tsunami risks has not been widespread among the general public in the islands located near the trench, but since 1988, Puerto Rico Seismic Society has been trying to use the Puerto Rican media to inform people about future earthquakes that could result in catastrophic tragedy. Following the 2004 tsunami, which affected more than 40 countries in the Indian Ocean, many more people now fear the consequences that such an event would bring into the Caribbean. Local governments have begun emergency planning. In the case of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, the United States government has been studying the problem for years. Another swarm this month, again Oklahoma City, more than 150 this month, which coincidentally is hundreds of miles away from the fault line, turns out to be pumping millions of gallons of salty water from the oil wells deep in the bowels of the earth to give Oklahoma the shakes. So, yes, the earth is shaking. Tremors. Light ones. We have this and a massive glacier has just dumped a chunk of ice off the coast of the western western Greenland, so enormous that it can be seen from outer space. And satellite images from ESA, European Space Agency, reveal this thing the size of Manhattan broke off Greenland's, I'm not even going to attempt to say it, glacier. earlier this month, possibly making it the largest carving ever recorded. This huge iceberg is almost five miles square in size. An ESA estimate said that it would cover an entire island, Manhattan, with a layer of ice some 1,000 feet, 300 meters thick. Scientists believe the iceberg was likely responsible for the famous sinking of the Titanic. Not this iceberg, but another one. Now images from the Sentinel-1A satellite, who is apparently one of the 20% not crashing and banging out there. It's funny, 14,000 satellites, and not one of them can show us the true image of space or the Earth. Hmm, she says to herself. Although, of course, 80% zombies. Maybe it's the zombie images we're getting. Okay, let's blame it on the zombies. Moving on. It's moving towards the coast. Right now. It's called a carving event. It took around... Around... August 14th, August 16th, that it finally broke off. Now, this glacier produces 10% of Greenland's icebergs, counts for 6.5% of the drainage of the Iceland, or Greenland ice sheet. So, it's 40 billion tons of ice that break off the glacier and fall into the ocean each year. 
Now, according to the Arctic Sea Book, this latest carving event, biggest ever. But apparently it's moving in their words, galloping speed. Weird. But over the past 25 years, Greenland's ice sheet has been melting 30% faster. If this ice sheet disappeared, science say sea levels would raise 20 feet. Which would, long story short, be an oh my god, WTF just happened event. Now, about the crash, a former advisor to Gordon Brown has urged people to stock up on canned goods, bottled water as stock markets around the world are sliding. Sliding is nice, put it to it. To say it, I would say it's run off the cliff and it is now falling. as if it has weights on it and demons jumping on its back. You should have the means to make water from your air. In your house. Right now. Or know how to go get it from outside. Seriously. Right now. Now, we will hear terror porn news about this. this is coming. You can't assume that banks and crash points will open. It dropped on Monday in a way it hasn't done since 2008. Remember 2008? Next. Okay, money. Tin goods. Essentials. Prepare for a month indoors. Make sure you have a month worth of food indoors. Long story short. Now, if you don't, get shopping because you won't find it. Now don't panic. Don't go shopping like it's um, that big sale day they have in the States. Black Friday where people stomp on each other. Also agree to have a rally point with your loved ones in case transport and communication cuts off. Somewhere that you will head to. Know the rules your mom, well my mom did anyway. The rules my mom had, in case I got lost shopping, we always meet at the front door. Have your rules. Doesn't happen? That's fine. And a month worth of dry goods is nothing. My grandma used to have six months. It's not a big deal. Europe. Worst refugee crisis since World War II. And of course they're being welcoming about it, right? Being welcoming like they wanted to be welcomed. Oh, I don't know. Turtle Island. Obviously, these would open. They would open their arms to their brothers and sisters, and at least two thousand more immigrants flooded overnight into Serbia. Desperate journey to try and go to Hungary. UN officials have warned as an emergency talks begin in Berlin. At least 7,000 people, mostly refugees, from a brutal war in Syria caused by USA, UK. This has been registered in the last couple of days in an overwhelmed Serbia as Europe's Worst refugee crisis in a half century rapidly worsens. Get ready 
You ain't seen nothing yet. Nothing. Nothing. We are about to see the biggest migration ever. You think that it was bad when Europe freaking evacuated and came over here? Oh no. It, it's just starting. Now these worsening conditions, all of these people entering from Serbia, and to Serbia from Macedonia, police on Saturday reopened the border with Greece after spending three days trying to hold back the stream of migrants. Hundreds braved barbed wire fences, stun grenades to force them back. But when you're running for your lives, you will not be stopped. Leaders of Germany and France will meet in Berlin on Monday to seek a unified stance on European efforts to tackle the biggest migration crisis ever since World War II as hundreds of people pour into Serbia on a desperate journey not for a better life. They want to live. Period. Then, of course, pressing EU's eastern flank Ukraine talks with Ukrainian president come amid an upsurge in violence again in the former Soviet state latest development in Macedonia have led to congestion we now have tens of thousands of refugees who have entered Serbia from Macedonia 2,000 more immigrants had registered at the border where Serbian authorities have set up a reception center with eight huge tents. Buses are being laid on the passersby where police hand out official documents to help migrants find their way towards their next de destination, the border with Hungary. Unlike Serbia, Hungary is an EU member state therefore a popular crossing point into the bloc, which is called. Although the country is currently building a 4 meter, 13 foot barbed fence along its border to stop the people fleeing for their lives. And I know I'm going to be getting messages because you don't understand what it's like to have people invading your country. Oh, contraire. Well, mes amis, I understand <laughs> this thing happening to our white brothers and sisters. Come on now, come get some. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can't remain with your children and no future when these places are being torn apart. You can't. People are running for their lives. They don't want your little freedom. They want you to live. Now, World War Three by any other name. China has attacked the U.S. economy. The U.S. retaliates. Iran and Saudi Arabia fight proxy wars. Koreans at loggerheads, cyber attacks around the globe, climate friggin' disaster is killing just about everything. <laughs> the latest strange mishap in a month of strange mishaps, a steel plant near the Haneda airport south of the Japanese capital, Tokyo, is burning out of friggin' control. And it is just the latest unexpected explosion around the world this month after similar fires in China times three, U.S. times four, Russia times a couple. So anyway, the three main protagonists, China, Russia, U.S., allegedly. Now, the political climate at the moment resembles a build-up 
to World War I, as I said last week. The U.S. military base exploded in a fireball. Kanaga um, Kanagawa, near Tokyo. The Pentagon confirmed this Sunday that an explosion occurred at a U.S. military base in Japan. No injuries reported. Department of Defense spokesman said later that the blast happened just after midnight at a building on the U.S. Army post about 25 miles southwest of Tokyo. And you can go on my page and see that things are freaking dropping out of the sky again. Now the global shares nosedive? Another war waging on the stock market. This is a war. Which probably why China's infrastructure has been targeted recently with the three unexplained explosions. At least three. We can confirm three. Anyway. One is just bad. Second, unfortunate coincidence. Third, that's an attack. This is this is a perfect storm is brewing. As the chaos in China's economy is much worse than you think, and it's dragging the world under it. We are sinking. And we have an albatross on our neck. The main London stock index down two point nine four percent in early trade Monday. Meanwhile the major markets, France, Germany, opened up well, open down, which is actually a thing, apparently, by more than 3%. It comes after the stock markets in Asia were hit overnight, with Shanghai composite in China going down 8.5, 8.4, the worst since 2007. Chinese shares continue on their sharp fall Monday, Tuesday, as concerns over the country's slowing growth. Volatile markets spark panic amongst traders. This is not why the United States has got its little britches and a knot is the problem. <laughs> Anywho, it is a dramatic double that is dragging across everything. Hong Kong index dropped 4.9. While the biggest, the region's biggest stock market went 4.6. Lowest in five months. Australia finished 4.1 lower. South Korea's index wrapped up 2.5 lower. Global market crash live. Massive fires erupted in Moscow again, southeastern Moscow, not from from the site of the oil refinery last week creating a gigantic column of fire seen as far as Red Square. Meanwhile, the sable rattling jumps up and down a notch. Along with the tension, Chinese and Russian navies are gearing up for their largest ever joint exercises, slated to begin um, Thursday in the Pacific with more than 20 ships featuring anti-submarine operations as well as joint beach landings. Oh yeah. Is that enough? Because we are not finished yet. <laughs> the joint, they're calling it Joint Sea 2005 2 or 2015. These exercises will run through August 28th in the Sea of Japan off the coast of Vladivostok. Hey, I can pronounce that. There you go. Now, of course, the U.S. have responded in kind. United States said this morning it has launched the biggest allied airborne drills in Europe since the Cold War ended. As fighting involving pro-Russian separatists 
escalated in eastern Ukraine. Nearly 5,000 soldiers from 11 NATO allies taking part in the four weeks simultaneous multinational airborne operations all across Germany and Italy and Bulgaria and um, Romania that began um, Saturday in the U.S. said the U.S. Army said in the statement Swift Response 15 who of course has nothing to do with J-Town 15 except it really friggin' does but it's the largest allied airborne training event on the continent since the end of the Cold War the Saudis and Iran Again, proxy war, so it's not bad, don't worry. In Yemen, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and the two Koreans pissing over the fence at each other. Cyber attacks recently have been hitting energy, transport, banking, military installations. Oh my god, Jade, you're rocking us right now. And meanwhile, The UN officials admits that there is no chance to support all of the refugees affected by war as the global number hits a record 60 million people without a home. Around 42,500 men, women, and children are were affected every day last year. Every day. One in 122 people on the planet right now are refugees, displaced, seeking asylum. Humanitarians cannot un ph UCK this situation. It is uncleanable. It is no longer possible. Europe sees a rise of 50% in displaced period people as immigrant migrant status escalates. The climate even more deadly than the wars. A summer like never before. Another weather extreme to go along with all the other weather extremes. The first half of 2015 hottest on record can't fight me on this was July hottest month ever recorded on planet Earth. June 2015 warmest June on record for the globe. Global land areas oceans each recorded a record warm June. July will be confirmed by NOAA as the hottest July ever recorded on land and oceans. And August, <laughs> August is off the hook and we're not done yet. This summer has been the hottest ever since we started writing this stuff down. Thousands of people have died in India, in Pakistan, in Asia, in Europe and the U.S. with old people being mostly affected. Millions of fish and marine life have died along with millions of catter, cattle. Agriculture has failed. Record droughts are being recorded worldwide. It is a terrifying glimpse into our apocalyptic future as each month has become more and more extreme. Cars melting bursting into flames from record heat, car steering wheels melting, roads melting, road cones melting, sheep's wool literally burning on their backs, record forest fires, it is three minutes to midnight, unchecked, unstoppable, global nuclear weapon modernizations unchecked global change climate and outsourced nuclear weapons arsenal pose extraordinary undeniable threats to the continued existence of this biome 
everything under the dough. World leaders have failed to act with the speed or on the scale required to protect us from potential catastrophe. These failures of political leadership endanger every single person on the world and despite some modest positive developments in the climate area arena, completely insufficient to prevent what is coming. United States, Russia have embarked on a massive program to modify and modernize their nuclear triads, thereby undermining the now existing nuclear weapons treaties. The clock ticks on and on and on. What will these keys to our cosmic doorway open? First, we have Pope Francis, the fisher of men. And sometimes you have to look back to see ahead. The origin of the Pope's strange fish hat rooted ancient Babylon, Dogon, Hebrew word, Dogon means fish. When studied from the side view, the hat, the mitre, that Pope Francis wears is symbolic of the open mouth of a fish. The Pope is like Dagon. And Jesus, again, fisher of men, hungry fish, hungry ghost. Jesus often went fishing with his disciples, eventually told them he would make them fishers of men. Some say Jesus is a symbolic, astrological sign of Pisces, the fish. Modern symbol for Jesus is actually the bladder of the fish, so the vesica Pisces. Dagon, Jesus, Pope. Uh, the first sign. 6,000 years or so ago was Taurus after the Old Norse the bull, believe it or not and that's because the sign Taurus came up on the horizon okay, Thursday let's play some Donald, Donald Tap and see if we can uh, let's make it see you guys Thursday Bye for now.